Kulubunaka, welcome to the Times Sports Show, another sports recording for the year. We're approaching uh, the half of the year, but sporting events are on, and uh, we everyone's looking forward to the draw game this uh, Saturday. That's uh, the match against the Queensland Reds, uh, Super Rugby Pacific. What a match that's going to be! A uh, quarterfinal berth on the line with uh, another three rounds to go in the regular season. But with us today, a uh, Queensland Reds fan, we can say, but uh, to talk about more on another sport that is athletics, Oceania Athletics. Executive Director Yvonne Mullins. Yvonne, thank you for your time uh, with the uh, Oceania Championships to be held in Fiji starting later this month. What a big event that's going to be. Uh, top athletes from the Oceania region will be here in Fiji competing for sports at the Olympic Games, of course, and some which have already qualified for the Olympic Games will be here from Australia, New Zealand, and other parts of the Pacific to compete at the championship. Uh, Yvonne, thank you for your time. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show with us. Uh, Big games for Fiji, uh, you don't like it to be called the games, it's the championships, <laughs> but uh, a lot to look forward to uh, for the championships this year. Yeah, we've got more than 2,000 athletes are up to now. It keeps growing by the day because we're getting so much attention here in, uh, in Fiji now, so we're really pleased about that. It's our biggest ever Oceania Championships, and yes, it's a championship, it's not a games. A games is more than one sport, so we'll stick with the championships tag. It's, uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, Fiji's always, it's the home, it's the hub of, of sport in the Pacific, and for us to be able to come here and to, to be at the stadium and to, to bring 1,200 athletes here is just fabulous athletes across all age groups so it's not just the elite going to be here uh, they're certainly going to be here and they're going to be here in numbers and the best of the best of the best of Oceania are going to be here but uh, as well as that we'll have a lot of uh, a lot of under 18 athletes that's the Oceania uh, under 18 championships and then we've got the under 16 and the under 20 teams competitions and that's where we expect to see a lot of the local schools who've just come off the back of the Fiji finals so we're, we're looking forward to, to seeing those athletes here We've got the Oceania Para Championships as well. So the Para event, the Para Championships, of course, are a, a prelude to the uh, to the Olympic to the Paralympics later in Paris. And then we've got the Masters Championships. So all of those 30 years and uh, and above, there's still an opportunity for the local Fijian athletes to compete there. But uh, you're going to see some great great athletes, some great events over seven days of competition. Hmm. Uh, Yvonne, you were here at the Fiji finals earlier this month, uh, the Coca-Cola Games, uh, people know it better off. Uh, you've been here at, at the Games previously as well. A lot of athletes from the Games have been selected to take part at the Oceania Championship. Uh, You've been into athletics for a while now. I guess it will be a great ep opportunity for this uh, athlete, secondary school athletes, uh, to go another level at the Oceania Championship. Yeah, I think that uh, I've always I've been coming here to the to the Coke Games for more than 20 years now, and I love it. I think it's one of the greatest events that we have on the calendar here in Oceania. But I think what it's showing is that the athletes have an opportunity to not just go to the Coke Games or to the Fiji Finals, and that's where it stops. This is part of the pathway. It's a pathway for them to go through. And, you know, I, I remember the years when Benuve uh, Tempacanthoro won and broke the record in the, in the boys' uh, 100 metres. You know, back then it was 10.43 and uh, that, that was back in 2011, so I've been coming here well before then as well. But to see him go on and to, to go to other events after the, the Coke Games was really, that was important. Uh, and I think we sometimes lose, lose the context of where the Fiji finals sit. They're a great event, a great school event. They're an incredible school event. But there's a pathway for them now, and the opportunity to come and have an Oceania Championships here, and to have a teams event as well, I think is really important. And then, of course, we then from here we go to the Pacific Games, the Commonwealth Games, if if hopefully there's a, a Commonwealth Games coming up, and of course the Olympic Games. But not just for able-bodied athletes, but also for our para athletes. So this is really important. The Fiji Coke Game, the Fiji Finals, the Coke Games are really important, but they're part of the pathway. Hmm. The last Pacific Games, or the South Pacific Games, it was known then in 2003 uh, that Fiji hosted, uh, we kind of dominated uh, the field, the track and field uh, with Papua New Guinea. Over the years, uh, over the past 20, 21 years, we've kind of lost track of that. But uh, this Oceania Championship, who knows, just maybe the turnaround Fiji needs? 
Look, it's going to be tough for the Pacific Island Federations. The Australian and the New Zealand teams are far stronger now than what they were. Uh, of course, we saw Australia and New Zealand at the Honiara Pacific mm. Games last year where they where they dominated on the track, uh, certainly the Australian athletes. Uh, but it is an opportunity for Fiji to start building. I was here in 2003, uh, so I'm showing my age well and truly now, but mm. I was here back then, and yes, you're right, Fiji and, and Papua New Guinea were the stars of the show. Uh, but now's the time to build because if Fiji is lucky enough or is fortunate enough to to have the 2031 Pacific Games where you know we're seven years out some of the athletes that we're seeing here in the under 16s will only be 23 24 years of age mm. uh, once we get there even the open athletes who are 18 and 19 just coming out of the uh, the Fiji finals are still going to be young enough to be competing at the Pacific Games in 31 so this is an opportunity to start start building the base now the base is really important and then we'll get we'll, we'll see those athletes come through but yeah I think Fiji's Look, you know, you've got such a strong uh, sporting history and it's time to get back on the track in athletics. Mm. Talking about the 2031 Pacific Games, uh, uh, Fiji's bidding to host the, uh, those games here in Fiji. Uh, Vanuatu is one, one of the big competitors and with the issues uh, with airlines being faced in Vanuatu, a good hosting of the Oceania Championship this year may just be enough uh, to get Fiji the bid? Yeah, my understanding is that the, uh, the vote will take place later this year in Palau. It's an opportunity you know for Fiji to show how good they are at hosting championships we've held many events uh, in Vanuatu and and mm. and they hold some great events 2017 they had the Pacific mini games uh, but Fiji is a big country uh, you've got lots of infrastructure and having that infrastructure I think is important when you want to hold a major games and the Pacific games is huge now and you know I just mentioned Australia and New Zealand are there as well so it's a big games the facility is is good the facility need, will need to be upgraded again between now and then but I think that if you're going for Pacific Games in 31 that the government will be you know right behind it obviously so yeah it's your opportunity uh, never a better opportunity I think and off the back of a really successful Oceania Championships it's yeah it might be your turn in 31 again. Mm, speaking about the facility the HFC Bank Stadium new tracks uh, before the Coke Games uh, there was a bit of issues uh, about the tracks uh, uh, it didn't it, it didn't turn out to be a major issue though but in terms of Oceania Athletics uh, are, are the tracks okay now for the Oceania Championship? Yeah we've checked the track and uh, we're comfortable but we know that the uh, contractors are coming in straight after the Drua and the Queensland Reds game on uh, on the weekend so we're, we'll be there and we'll be we'll be certainly making sure it's up to standard uh, we want the athletes to have the very best best facility that they can have uh, for the championships uh, we've you know we're still checking out equipment we're doing those sorts of things at the moment uh, we think we're on track I'm I, I must say I'm, I'm I'm always happy to be in Fiji mm. but uh, it's been good for me to be here the three weeks well a month before the, the championships because it allows us to to really fine-tune what we've got to do so yeah no the stadium is good the track will be great and it will be fast as long as we can keep this weather w away from us that, that we've got at the moment. Mm. Uh, the championship is expecting a uh, few athletes from Australia and New Zealand who have already qualified for the Olympic Games, uh, uh, some uh, fast athletes, some 100 meter athletes, 4 by 100 meter athletes as well. Uh, so it's a good opportunity for the fans here who hardly get to see these uh, top class athletes compete in Fiji. Yeah, Australia just qualified for the Olympics in the 4 by one and uh, for the men and the women so most of those athletes who'll be competing in Paris in the 4x1 uh, relays will be here they are the fastest in the Pacific mm -hmm. at the moment they're going to be hard to beat they're, they're tough but it doesn't mean that it's not a great competition uh, there's there's going to be a, a Pacific Islanders in the finals and hopefully for Fiji they'll be they'll be in the finals you had some great performances at the Pacific Games you had some of your high jumpers that uh, did you you know you won the men's high jump at the Pacific Games in the Solomon Islands so we're looking forward to seeing you know those athletes back here it, it's just a wonderful opportunity for the public to come out and see real what do I want to say not real performances but performances that are at the top level and mm -hmm. you know what remembering that 
these athletes who are going off to the Olympics, they might be just as, they're going to be just as nervous when they get to the Olympics and there's another standard sometimes ahead of them as well. So it's just part of the pathway again. The Aussies might come here and dominate in some of the events, but you know, let's see how they go when they get to the Olympics. It's not quite so easy in the, in the, in the track. You know, remembering that athletics has more countries compete in it than any other country, than any other sport in the world. So when we, when we go to an Olympics, all of our countries are, are there and, and competing. So it's tougher for us to, from the Pacific to get into those finals, but we just keep on plugging away and we're breaking national records. We're seeing personal bests broken and people are out there and they're competing. And, you know, we, we concentrate on the elite, but have a look when the masters come. And I, you know, for everybody out there, just come along one day and have a look at some of these masters athletes compete. They are incredible mm. and it just shows that age shouldn't uh, weary us age should be just the start so you know there'll be athletes competing from 33 to 80 something years of age uh, so you know this is an opportunity for all of our Fijians if you haven't entered uh, think about it come and join us at the stadium um, you can still get an entry for the for the masters as well mm. we've heard reports that the, the Prime Minister Sitiveni Rambuka will be competing as well uh, I mean that's just an example he's I guess well over 70 so if he can uh, there, there's uh, potential for many others to join the Masters category. Great role model to have your Prime Minister competing out there I mean I think that's an incredible time and he's one his first competition I think is the discus and that's on the day of the opening so we hope that when he comes to the opening he's got his uh, he's got his discus shoes and his throwing arm ready to go but mm -hmm. yeah I think it's a great uh, a great role model for, for everybody here we've always got to be aware that um, you know in in the Pacific you know we've got lots of NCDs that we're trying to fight all the time so get out on the track go down walk on the seawall it's beautiful now I mean what's happened to Suva in the last few years has been incredible so you know there's opportunities for every age group and of course the powers I you know I can't I can't emphasize enough how important it is for us to have an inclusive championship here in Fiji mm -hmm. and to have the the, the powers you know, uh, competing alongside uh, our able bods in the under 18s, the Masters and, and, and the senior events is just incredible for us. We think it's going to be a great championship and uh, yeah, who knows, uh, maybe we'll have lots of Oceania records and let's hope we see uh, some Fijians up on the dice. Hmm. Uh, talking about the fans, uh, uh, the cold games we had a near sellout on the last day. I'm pretty sure you'd be you'd be wanting similar atmosphere for for the Oceania Championship as well. But for the fans, uh, when and where can they get tickets from if if the prizes are confirmed already, and what else they can expect apart from what what's happening on the track and the field? Yeah, the tickets will start to go on sale next week, and so we're just finalising that at the moment. So they'll be available online, and of course you can pick up a ticket at the at the gate, the same as at the Fiji finals. Uh, I saw the lines out the, uh, out the gate, so they might prefer to pick the tickets up online. So that'll mm -hmm. be happening next week. Uh, in terms of what else, we'll have, um, there'll be lots going on all of the time, but we also will have education opportunities. So if any of the, any of the younger ones come through, the voices of the athletes will be there, and we'd like to invite everybody to come in and, and, and join the activities that are happening there. And uh, on the final Saturday, we'll have a kids athletics demonstration, which again is another opportunity, and it shows the younger ones what they can do so we see you know we love our sport athletics but uh, I reckon if you look at the Drua team and you look at the Queensland Reds team there'll be a few of those boys out there who probably have done athletics as part of their their build up over the years to be where they are so we understand that athletics is a sport that's a, a really good platform and, and it's a foundation sport for people to go out there and do other sports so come along for the kids athletics see what they're doing there and of course come along and just join in it's uh, it's going to be a great week. We're going to have the band there and we're going to, the, the Fiji bands are going to be there and we're going to have lots of entertainment. So it'll be a great week. It'll be, uh, it'll be different from the Coke Games but it'll be mm. a great week of competition. Mm. Finally, before we approach the end of the show, uh, Oceania Championships in Fiji, while, while the Fijian athletes, uh, the lo local athletes, will get a chance to compete against the best in, in the Pacific. I guess it's, uh, it's a win-win situation for Fiji, uh, considering the economic benefits it will get, uh, getting so many thousand plus athletes and officials into the country. Uh, 
Fiji can only hope for more competitions like this. So, you know, the other as aspects uh, you might want to highlight that Fiji will benefit uh, with these games being held in Fiji. Oh, the economic impact on, on Suva in particular is, is immense, you know, with over 1,200 athletes. And that doesn't even consider the number of uh, team officials that are coming with them, the support teams with them. And then, of course, we've got the technical officials and the families. So many families are so excited to come back to the Pacific and, and to cheer on their athletes. So, you know, we're going to have a huge number of people coming in here over the next few weeks. Uh, and then a lot of them, I know from what I'm reading and what I'm seeing and they're telling me is that they're all going to head to the West for a few days holiday after they've been in Suva, in Suva for the championships. So the economic impact is, is really important to Suva. The opportunity to host big events and, and to learn from those big events. The education that our technical officials and that our coaches are going to have the opportunities to be involved in over that time. Uh, I think it just builds a really good foundation for us moving forward here in Fiji for the uh, Pacific Games in 31 if we're, if we're successful here. So it's, it's not just about what happens on the track, it's about everything else and uh, I, I, I just can't emphasise enough how we would love to see uh, members of the public come in and support the athletes, support their teams, the school teams are going to be there as I said, mm -hmm. so it's, it's going to be a great week. Thank you for all the information, Yvonne, and uh, we look forward to talking to you more uh, before the start of the championship. There you go, uh, that's Yvonne for you, and uh, what, what a week it's going to be uh, as the Oceania Championship uh, starts at the end of the month at the HFC Bank Stadium in Suva. Remember to get all the details about the championship uh, in, our, in our papers. Uh, we have two sponsored pages uh, two, uh, two times a week, so all the information about the championship is available there, and of course you, you can uh, log onto our online platforms uh, to get the latest on the championship and of course all other sporting events that's happening around the country. Till we meet again, Nisa Mode.